Hello, my name is Andy. And I am the Village Idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro. And an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the district of West Lindsay and to a very small parish just to the south of Gainsborough. This is Nath. Nath Parish lies about three miles south of the town of Gainsborough in the West Lindsay district of Lincolnshire. The population of the civil parish at the 2011 census was 335. This is one of those that split into two distinct parts. Most of the population live here in Nath Park, just to the south of Lee. This is the part of the parish which has the main amenities, although they don't number very many, as we'll see shortly. However, there are some interesting features we need to see. Okay, so Nath is split into two areas. We have Nath itself and we have Nath Park, which is where I am right now. Now, this is much more residential than Nath. As you can see, there's plenty of um, houses along this one main street. There is another street actually as well, uh, which leads towards Nath. That's got a few properties on it too. We'll catch that as we go round. I'm heading at the moment towards a railway bridge because there's a railway line, surprisingly, that runs underneath it. It's an active railway line, it's not a disused one, and it's one we've seen before. The line here is the Doncaster to Lincoln line, and we've seen this a few times, most notably at Stowe Park level crossing at the end of the Stowe episode. Services on the line are provided by East Midlands and Northern, with a few continuing through Lincoln to the Peterborough to Lincoln line. The line is part of the former Great Northern and Great Eastern Joint Railway. There's a footpath running down the side of the line here, which leads to the other main street in Nath Park, Station Road, named as such because Nath used to have one. The path leads to the former Nath railway station, which is now residential. The line is still very much active though. See the name of this street? Hainings is an important name to this village. That's because of Hainings Priory, founded by Rainer de Evermew, Lord of Nath for Cistercian nuns, probably early in the reign of King Stephen. De Evermew died before the Priory was finished, leaving the nuns short of funds. The Priory was dissolved by Henry VIII in 1539 and the site was granted to Sir Thomas Heenage and his wife Catherine. At his death in 1553, it passed by marriage to Lord Willoughby of Parham, along with the Manor of Nath. Lord Willoughby of Parham was the leader of the parliamentarian troops in Lincolnshire during the Civil War. For centuries, many people believed Hainings to have been located along the banks of the Trent, together with some buildings which may have formed part of it. However, Park Farm South, which is to the southeast of Nath Park, has been shown to be the site. I will point out here that my research quite often at points referred to the site of Hainings Priory being near to the River Trent, a site we'll get to soon. As you can imagine, this was very confusing and I've done my best to make sense of it. After reading everything, I'm firmly of the opinion it was at Park Farm South. Nath is also notable as the birthplace of Thomas Sutton, who was the founder of Charterhouse School and Hospital in London. Sutton was Master of the Ordnance in the North. He made his fortune from coal mines near Newcastle and became one of the largest moneylenders in Elizabethan England. Demographically, Nath is made up of a population that identifies as 99.4% white British. It covers an area of 5.5 square kilometres, which gives it a population density of 56.74. The average house in Nath will cost you £470,000. As for what Nath has amenities wise, there's a pub called the Stag's Head, which only opens at weekends according to the board outside. The information on the website what pub then is apparently out of date. I've still included a link to that in the description. There's also a village hall, suitable for a wide range of events including private parties, public meetings, charitable and fundraising events and child-based activities. Nath has a bus service and that's the 100, which runs between Lincoln and Gainsborough. 
The bus shelter is where we find one of the parish notice boards. It almost doubles as an information point. Tick it off, Nath has been visited. Now let's go down this single track road over the railway line to check out Nath. Now we're away from Nath Park and we're in Nath itself, which lies on the A156. Nath means the landing place by the knee or bend. The landing place aspect of the name implies that the area was regarded as a convenient access point to the River Trent and perhaps indicates why the settlement is located here. The site was already important in the Roman period when during the 3rd and 4th centuries a pottery and tile industry was established to the north. Studies have indicated that the Trent played a vital role in the survival of Nath as a settlement. Indeed, there would have been many reasons why the river was needed for transportation. Nath, while always small, underwent considerable fluctuations in its size and prosperity, possibly as a result of the poor sandy soils of much of its land. The impact of the Black Death in 1349 is also difficult to assess. Now, one thing that makes Nath so interesting is the fact that it has a deserted medieval settlement and the earthworks which remain from that settlement are right here next to the A156 behind this hedge. I'll just try and put my camera as best I can over the top of this hedge. It's, there's a big ditch here as you can see, I don't want to be standing in that. There they are, there's the earthworks. There are actually two sets of earthworks here, there's these here and there are some which are, I believe, not totally sure on this, somewhere to the east over here uh, behind these farm buildings. I think that's where they are, but the main set of earthworks are right there between the road and the River Trent, which you can just see in the distance. The surviving earthworks fall into two clearly defined groups. The first is the one I've just shown you and must represent, at least in part, the site of medieval Nath. These earthworks again seem to illustrate the part played by the river and its utilisation not only in affecting the form of the settlement along its bank, but also perhaps in helping to sustain occupation. Medieval pottery fragments were observed in this area during a survey. Like Nath, some other Trent site settlements in the region, notably Martin, retain a similar pattern of former parallel roads leading from the river. A little later on I did find the second set of earthworks but they are obscured from view in the field behind this tree. The village was recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086 when the manor was owned by Stowe Abbey and tenanted by the Bishop of Lincoln. Nath used to be much bigger than it currently is. On the 24th of March 1884 the parish was reduced in size by transferring Thirlby Wood to Upton Civil Parish. Two former streets survive with one that's still used to give access to the church and hall. The parish church of Nath dates to the 11th century with major rebuilding in the 14th and 18th centuries. In 1630 it was reduced in size and turned into a private chapel for the owners of Nath Hall who incorporated the church into a landscape garden design. All that remains now is the nave of the medieval church with a twin gabled roof. The church shares a hillside by the river with Nath Hall, the white building seen here. The origins of the church are unclear and as mentioned earlier it was for many years thought to be the nave or transept of Hainings Priory. Philip Darcy, the fourth Baron Darcy of Nath who died in 1398, is buried in the churchyard. Near the hall are remains of a 16th century garden and 18th century deer park. From 1553 the hall was the principal residence of the Willoughby family and in 1900 the hall was the home of Major Henry Charles Heinemann Allenby. So I just noticed this here at the church. This is not the easiest church to film by the way because there's nowhere really to stand back and get a good long shot of it. But look at the walls here. This is fantastic, look at this. The way these stones have been um, placed into the wall. I'm sure there's a name for this but I can't remember for the life of me what it is. I couldn't remember the name, but my research tells me it's Herringbone Masonry. The south of the churchyard gives us access to the eastern bank of the Trent, and on a day like this, it was just quite amazing to see how beautiful the Nottinghamshire-Lincolnshire border is. 
Don't let anyone ever tell you the Trent Valley isn't a gorgeous part of England, folks. So if you can cast your mind back to the Sturton Listiefel episode of Bassett Law, uh, there is a road on the other side of the river over there called Nath Hall Road or Nath Hall Lane, one or the other. And it used to have a ferry, I believe, which transported uh, people across the river to here at Nath. Okay, that's just about it for the parish of Nath. Now I haven't uh, had the Strava app on on this one. Not really much point because uh, just a simple walk around Nath Park and a walk straight through Nath and down towards the Priory won't look all that fantastic on Strava. If I'm being totally honest, it's not a circular route. Um, and also it's too small to warrant a picture bit today. Uh, I think I've shown you the main parts anyway. Uh, so that's pretty much it. On a nice fine day out here, in the Trent Valley and don't let anybody tell you that the Trent Valley is not a beautiful part of the world because I certainly think it is and if you live out here if you live out here you should be proud of where you live. This has been the parish of Nathan I've been Andy also known as the village idiot and I'm out. Mm -hmm.